Hello and Assalamualaikum. A very good day to everyone. Welcome to Sir Easy Edutainment channel. Today we'll be looking at the Form 4 activity. We will be doing Unit 4, Lesson 50, and our focus skill is writing. So, are you guys ready? Let's do it! Now, we are going to look at our content standard for today. The main skills. Writing 4.1. Communicate intelligibly through print and digital media on familiar topics. The complementary skills. Writing 4.1.5. Organize, sequence and develop ideas within a text of several paragraphs on familiar topics. The learning standard, reading 3.1, understand a variety of texts by using a range of appropriate reading strategies to construct meaning. And reading 3.1.6, recognize with support typical features at word, sentence, and text levels of an increased range of genre. Okay? So, before we start, yeah, before we start our lesson today, so I have a few questions I want to ask you. Okay, the first one is, when you do school projects, do you prefer working in a group or do you prefer working on your own? Ah, and can you tell me why? So basically, when you, whenever you, you are at school or you're, doing your, you're having your PDPR lesson at home, Let's say if your teacher gave you a school project, cikgu kamu bagi satu project, kemudian cikgu kamu bagi pilihan sama ada nak berbuat dalam berkumpulan group ataupun seorang working on your own, ha, yang mana yang kamu akan pilih? And why? Yeah, look at this picture. This person seems to be working alone. Yang ni, uh, mungkin dia work as a group. And it pun memang work as a group lah. But for this picture, perhaps this is because uh, they are at home right now during PKP maybe. Uh, so, ni mungkin group work dia orang lah. Okay, so, how? Okay, now I'm going to give you an example answer, right? For my question here. Kalau kita prefer berkumpulan. Okay, so I prefer group work because it is much easier to work in groups as we could divide our work. Working together also is quite fun because I get to be with my friends. Saya lebih suka bekerja secara berkumpulan sebab lagi mudah bekerja berkumpulan sebab boleh agihkan kerja. So, dapat seorang sikit kerja. So, lagi senang lah sebab seorang sikit, seorang sikit. So, siap. Then working together, bekerja sama. Also juga, ah, lebih menarik, quite fun. Dan seronok sebab saya boleh bersama dengan kawan-kawan saya. Ah, It doesn't mean that ah, group work kamu kena cari kawan sendiri saja. Ah, tak juga. Mungkin group work tu ah, kamu bersama dengan orang yang kamu jarang bersembang. Mungkin orang yang baru. Ah, So ini pun adalah satu something new for you. Okay? Kalau, ha, ni contoh kalau kata kamu pilih individual work. I prefer individual work because I work better alone without the distractions of others. Ha. I have my own ideas which I want to use and I don't want others to influence my work. So, dia kata kat sini, ha, ni macam bunyi agak macam selfish. Tak tahulah tapi mungkin bagi setengah orang dia kata macam selfish lah kan. Tapi ada setengah orang yang lebih suka bekerja berseorangan sebab ha, dia tak ada distraction. Distraction ni maksud dia gangguan. Contoh dia kadang-kadang dalam ramai-ramai mungkin kamu bekerja in three or four people in one group. Kadang-kadang yang buat kerja tu mungkin seorang je. Yang lain tu hanya tahu tanya soalan. Eh, malam pergi mana? Eh, tengok tak lagi video ni? Eh, main belum? Ah, ha, macam tu. So, This kind of thing mungkin akan 
mengganggu so, tengok orang untuk fokus. Right, next, he also said that I have my own ideas which I want to use and I don't want others to influence my work. Ah, uh, yang ni dia ada juga sesuatu tengok orang. There are some people who cannot work in a group. Okay, sebab mereka nak idea mereka because dia rasa jawapan dia adalah jawapan yang paling betul. Uh, jawapan orang lain tak betul dan dia tak nak jawapan orang lain tu kacau uh, pilihan jawapan dia. Okay, harap korang semua faham eh. Okay, so next. Now, okay, first of all, I'm very sorry about the quality of the picture. Ah, uh, And saya tak type semula yang ni. But hopefully you guys can look at this. But you can also look back at your textbook. Uh, this is this was taken from your textbook. Form for textbook, okay? The full blast. Alright, so your teachers ask you to write an essay on the following topic. Uh, so this is an example essay daripada topic. What are the advantages and disadvantages, kelebihan dan kekurangan of team project work at school? Hmm. Kelebihan dan kekurangan tim projek-projek berkumpulan di sekolah. Ha, apakah yang korang rasa kebaikan dan juga keburukan dia? Hmm, agak-agak cuba fikir dalam lebih kurang 10 saat. Okay. Now I'm going to read this. Ha. Kalau kamu perasan kat sini, if you look at this, The first sentence is underlined. Kenapa tu? Uh, sebelum kita baca, I'm going to tell you something. The first sentence in each paragraph is called a topic sentence. Uh, dia macam satu ayat. Nah, uh, dalam bahasa Melayu yang mudah. Dia satu ayat yang bagi yang mengeluarkan main idea pasal apa yang kamu nak cakap dalam paragraph tu. Okay, so we'll start. Team project work is becoming more and more popular in schools nowadays. Some teachers and students believe that it has many advantages while others disagree. Projek berkumpulan semakin mula popular di sekolah sekarang. Dan ada juga guru-guru dan pelajar yang percaya dia banyak kelebihan tapi ada juga yang percaya Eh, ada juga yang tidak bersetuju. Kata dia tidak. Dia ada banyak kelemahan. Okay, next. It is a fact that students benefit in many ways from doing team project work. To begin with, it is an ideal way for students to learn to cooperate and at the same time learn about a particular subject. In addition, Each member of the team contributes different ideas, knowledge and skills and that adds to the success of the project. Team members are also able to learn from each other this way. Okay, so for dekat perenggan yang kedua ni, on second paragraph, main idea dia dia kata adalah satu fakta bahawa pelajar mendapat Kelebihan, keuntungan. Ha, macam itulah. Dari banyak cara daripada kerja secara berkumpulan. Ha, okay, dia dah cakap dah banyak kelebihan kat sini. Kerja secara berkumpulan. Yang pertama dia kata. Ideal way. Satu cara yang baik untuk pelajar belajar untuk bekerjasama. So, kalau orang yang mungkin tak pandai bersosial, tak pandai nak bekerjasama, dia boleh belajar kat sini. And at the same time, learn about a particular subject. Maksudnya, bukan saja belajar bekerjasama. Tapi, dapat juga belajar pasal subjek. Contoh dia, projek tu projek bahasa Inggeris. Ha, kamu akan dapat belajar lebih lagi pasal bahasa Inggeris dengan kawan-kawan. In addition, each member of the team, ha, tambahan pula, setiap ahli dalam kumpulan tu, menyumbang idea yang berlainan. Ha, dan tiap-tiap ahli dalam kumpulan tu ada skill Keupayaan yang berlainan ha, yang akan kamu letak sekali yang akan menjadikan projek kamu tu berjaya. Ha, 
Daripada sini juga kamu boleh belajar tentang diri uh, sesama sendiri. Next paragraph. However, there are also certain disadvantages involved in team project work. Firstly, members of the team often become very competitive or cannot get along with each other, which can destroy the project. Secondly, team members do not always contribute equally. For instance, some do all the work while others avoid getting involved. Lastly, working in a team can be very time-consuming. As a result, students often become frustrated and think that they could do it all faster alone. Ha, kat sini, perenggan ni dia cakap pasal kekurangan. Ada beberapa kekurangan dia. Yang, yang pertama, Ahli setiap kumpulan, kadang-kadang dia jadi kompetitif. Dia nak berlawan sesama masing-masing. Nak bagi tahu kata, oh saya pandai lagi, saya pandai lagi. Dan last, kerja tak jalan. Secondly, ha, second point dia, dia kata, team members tak selalunya buat kerja sama-sama. Kadang-kadang mungkin seorang je yang buat kerja. Yang lain tak buat apa-apa. Ataupun kerja, grup tu ada empat orang. Dua orang sentiasa pulun buat kerja. Cik pulun eh. Ha. Manakala dua lagi macam buat tak tahu je. Tak reply pun mesej ke apa semua. Dan juga kadang-kadang bila dah kerja berkumpulan ni. Dia mengambil masa yang lama sebab nak jumpa dengan semua orang lah. Apa susah lah. Jadi kadang-kadang last-last rasa macam baik buat seorang-seorang je. Ha. Itulah yang dikat maksudkan dalam perenggan yang ketiga. Okay, for the fourth paragraph. On the whole, I believe that the advantages are more important than disadvantages. From my point of view, teamwork should be encouraged in class, but there should be a balance of individual work and teamwork so that students can benefit the most. Jadi dia kata kat sini, secara keseluruhan dia, saya rasa kebaikan lebih lagi daripada keburukan. Daripada pendapat saya sendiri, teamwork, Memang patut digalakkan di dalam kelas. Tapi kena ada balance juga. Tak boleh semua teamwork. Kena ada individu juga. Dan kadang ada teamwork. Supaya uh, pelajar akan rasa lebih selesa. Uh, ataupun mungkin ada setengah pelajar macam tadi. Yang tak boleh bekerjasama. Uh, dia memerlukan aktiviti yang indi- uh, melibatkan hanya individu. So, dah habis baca dah. So sekarang soalan tadi, what are the advantages and disadvantages of team project work at school? Ha, ini adalah satu soalan yang kamu boleh jawab. So you may you may read this again and write it down dekat buku ataupun kertas mana-mana. Bagi nota. Next. Let's look at the question. Okay, so tadi, ha, tadi kita dah faham dah. Tadi essay tu yang orang tu buat. Now, kita nak cuba tengok di segi soalan format dia pula. The first question, what is the function of the underlying sentences in the essay? Choose A or B. Ah, Yang pertama, A dia kata, to summarize what the writer has said in the previous paragraph. Maksud dia untuk uh, sebagai kesimpulan tentang apa yang penulis cakap pada perenggan yang sebelum. B. To introduce the main idea of the paragraph. Untuk memperkenalkan idea utama, idea kepada paragraph tu. Tadi, so dah cakap dah tadi. Ah, topic sentence, so dia adalah B. Answer is B. Number two. In the second paragraph, how many advantages does the writer mention? What are they? Ah, ni yang seronok tadi kan. Kita dah cakap dah. Boleh baca balik dan tulis nota di tepi sebab kita nak jawab soalan yang ni. In the second paragraph, berapa keuntungan, kelebihan yang ditulis? Apakah dia semua tu? Number three, sama juga. Cuma beza dia. How many disadvantages does the writer mention in the third paragraph? 
what are they? Jadi kamu kena tulis berapa banyak kekurangan yang penulis tu cakap. Kemudian, apa dia? Contoh kalau kamu kata ada tiga kekurangan. So, apa dia tiga-tiga tu? Satu apa dia, dua apa dia, tiga apa dia. Number four. In which paragraph does the writer express his or her opinion? Dalam perenggan manakah penulis tu menerangkan idea dia? Tadi mungkin dia cakap pasal kelebihan kekurangan. Tapi kan ni dia bagi pendapat. Dekat nombor empat ni dia tanya, paragraf mana yang betul-betul dia bagi pendapat dia? Pendapat dari diri dia sendiri. Number five. Which linking words or phrases? Ah, linking words. Kalau kamu ingat apa yang dah kamu pernah belajar dulu. Linking words. As the writer, you circle them. So for this question, you no need to circle them. You may also write it down. Ada berapa banyak? Dan apakah semua linking words yang digunakan itu? Okay. Next, we are going to look at next activity. We are going to look at C. Read the essay below about whether it is necessary for students to have homework. Adakah perlu untuk pelajar ada homework? Choose the most suitable topic sentence for each paragraph and say why you think it is the most suitable choice. Uh, so, nak terangkan balik. Tengok balik note dia. Topic sentences introduce the central idea of the paragraph. The other sentences in the paragraph develop the idea expressed in the topic sentence by expanding on it, giving examples or explaining it. Jadi kat sini dia kata topic sentence ni bagi main idea macam tadi yang dah diterangkan. Dia cakap idea apa benarnya, apa punca utama, apa benda utama yang nak diterangkan dalam paragraf tu. Okay. So untuk soalan ni, kalau kamu tengok bahagian kanan ni, dia tunjuk, ini adalah jawapan dia. A atau B. Kamu pilih. A atau B ni adalah topik senten yang sesuai untuk number one ni. Okay, and again, sorry sebab dia tak clear. You may also refer it back to your textbook. But, for the first question, saya akan tolong bacakan. Most students hate the thought of it. However, Most teachers think it is a necessary part of the learning process. Number two, by doing homework, students have the opportunity to practice what they have learned during the lesson. Furthermore, homework helps students to revise and consolidate knowledge. Number three, they feel that spending time with friends and family or doing a sport is a very important part of growing up. Moreover, as they see it, practice, revision, and consolidation can be done during school hours. Number four. Personally, I would rather have time after school for my own interests. However, whenever teachers need to assign homework, it should be very little. Okay, now, again, eh? Untuk kamu pilih jawapan, Make sure, pastikan. Ingat, topik sentence adalah central idea. Idea utama pasal paragraf tu. Ayat-ayat yang selepas tu hanyalah dia punya supporting detail. Ayat-ayat yang support. Dia bagi lagi contoh. Dia bagi lagi ayat-ayat sokongan tambahan. Okay? Tapi topik sentence tu ingat, itu adalah idea utama. So, make sure pilihan kamu. Kalau kamu tengok di dalam... Dia lebih kepada macam dia bagi contoh. Itu bukan topik sentence. Topik sentence tu macam idea utama dia. Contoh number one. Ask a student about homework and you will be told that it is a form of punishment. If you ask students and teachers about homework, you will get a variety of different reactions. Daripada dua ni, satu dia kata punishment. Satu dia kata Reaksi yang berbeza. Maksudnya punishment ada, rewards pun ada. Now kamu baca balik number one ni. Jadi penerangan dia agak-agak dia terangkan satu saja, ataupun dia terangkan pasal dua reaksi yang berbeza. Ataupun reaksi daripada orang yang ramai. Ha, jadi kamu tengok. 
barulah kamu tahu yang mana satu jawapan yang betul. Okay? Next, for D. Oh, ada banyak sikit kerja ni. Read the writing task below and make a list of advantages and disadvantages in the table. Then write the essay. Yes, so sekarang kita nak tulis essay. Now, let's look at the plan. When writing an essay discussing advantages and disadvantages, organize your idea according to the plan below. Okay, so bila kita nak tulis uh, satu essay pasal kebaikan dan keburukan, kita jangan terus start our essay. We need to plan. Kita plan. Kita kena tulis dulu. Apakah kebaikan dia? Tulis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Berapa ada? Apakah keburukan dia? Tulis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. First, dekat introduction, you need to write. Introduce the subject of the essay and both sides of the topic. Maksud dia, kamu bagi tahu dulu subjek. Contoh dia, soalan dia adalah, what are the pros and cons of team sports? Maksud dia, kebaikan dan keburukan sukan berkumpulan. Contoh dia macam bola sepak, bola keranjang, baseball, uh, football, what else, rugby. Uh, semua apa kebaikan dan keburukan dia main secara berkumpulan. Kenapa tak main macam tenis je? Mungkin seorang. Uh, dia ada beregu juga tapi kita ambil yang seorang lah kan. So, for the introduction, make sure you introduce the subject. Apa yang kamu nak cakap? Lepas tu kamu cakap juga, uh, dalam essay kamu ni ada dua-dua bahagian. Kebaikan dan keburukan. Kemudian, main part. Sama macam contoh karangan tadi yang kita dah baca, dia bahagikan bahagian tengah tu, bahagian isi tu dengan dua bahagian. Yang pertama, advantages. Satu perenggan, settle. Yang kedua, disadvantages. Satu perenggan, dah habis. Uh, tapi kat sini dia kata cover both sides of the topic equally. Jangan contoh dia advantages ni kamu tak 10, kamu cerita pasal 10 kebaikan, tiba-tiba dia kekurangan kamu cerita satu je kekurangan. Ha, dia tak balance sebab kita kita dia tak suruh kita pilih. Ingatlah soalan dia dia kata what are the pros and cons? Apakah kebaikan dan keburukan? Dia tak kata yang mana lebih baik. Ataupun dia tak tanya kamu setuju ke tak team sport ni baik? Tak ada. Ha, dia tanya apakah kebaikan dan keburukan. Dia suruh kita banding je. Kita letak je. Tu je. Next. Last sekali untuk conclusion. Make a general statement. Use like in conclusion. Ha, ni nak guna, mulakan uh, apa perenggak akhir kamu tu. To sum up. All in all. On the whole. Taking everything into consideration. Ha, jadi kat sini kamu boleh letak. Secara keseluruhan dia. Okay. Permainan team sport ni ada baik dan juga buruk or something like that. Very general. Jangan pilih apa-apa lagi. Dan last sekali baru kamu letak. In my opinion, I believe that team sports apa? Good ke? Bad ke? Apa ke macam mana? Ha, lepas tu bagi satu sebab kamu. And then selesai perenggan ni. So, berapa perenggan kat sini? Only one, two, three, and four. Just four paragraphs. Sama dengan contoh yang kita baca tadi tu. Alright, so, itulah dia. Thank you very much for watching the video. Settle dah lesson kita untuk hari ini. Assalamualaikum.